with an assault force of more than 150,000 troops from 12 allied nations, it's remembered as the most famous opposed amphibious landing operation of World War II. This is Five Things You Don't Know About D-Day. Planning for D-Day was certainly a monumental task, which required Allied commanders to labor over every detail of the operation. Of central importance to the planning was the effort to collect detailed aerial photo reconnaissance images of the beaches where Allied troops would eventually have to fight their way ashore. On June 30, 1943, almost a full year before the invasion, a reconnaissance aircraft photographed the stretch of coastline that would ultimately be codenamed Omaha Beach. The photographs that aircraft collected that day revealed that German engineers were building trenches, fighting positions, and other fortifications on top of the bluff and at the water's edge, positions that would have to be overcome on the day of battle. In this critical way, the year-long planning phase for the invasion contributed meaningfully to the eventual success of the Allied assault on Fortress Europe. Five weeks before the June 6th landings, Allied planners launched a massive dress rehearsal in southwestern England. Codenamed Exercise Tiger, the top secret simulated amphibious assault exercise was to take place at Slapton Sands, a stretch of beach on Lime Bay in Devon and Dorset. But unfortunately, the dress rehearsal didn't go nearly as planned. First off, German high-speed torpedo boats patrolling the waters of the English Channel intercepted and attacked a slow-moving convoy of LSTs carrying men who were slated to land on Utah Beach on D-Day. And due to a communication error between the American LSTs and the British ships that were supposed to be escorting them, the LSTs were left almost completely defenseless. Within no time, two LSTs had been sunk and two damaged, leaving hundreds of soldiers and sailors dead in the water. A second disaster occurred during the actual beach landings. Thanks to another miscommunication between the British and American militaries, U.S. troops landed while the British bombardment was still going on, which resulted in even more casualties, this time to friendly fire. When the dust finally settled on Exercise Tiger, approximately a thousand men were dead, a loss greater than what was sustained on Utah Beach during D-Day. Because the Allies could only bring in a limited number of fighting divisions during the assault phase on D-Day, the need to convince the Germans that the invasion force was larger than it really was, was critically important. To help accomplish this, Allied forces launched Operation Bodyguard, a complex deception strategy that involved leaking fake plans, transmitting bogus messages, and creating non-existent fake military units using dummy equipment, aircraft, and landing craft. The U.S. Army even created a phony unit called FUSAG, the first United States Army group, and placed General George Patton in command of it. On the morning of the invasion, Allied aircraft also dropped hundreds of fake paratroopers, known as Ruperts, at several locations in the vicinity of the invasion beaches. Some of the dummies were even equipped with recordings of gunfire to help make the Germans believe that they were under a large-scale airborne attack. Despite how it's been portrayed in dozens of popular films, the D-Day invasion didn't catch the Germans completely by surprise. By early 1944, the German military in occupied France was beginning to assemble an intelligence picture of the current tactical and strategic situation. This included a very accurate appraisal of where an Allied invasion might come ashore. The Germans had seen what an Allied assault from the sea looked like the previous summer with the invasions in Sicily and at Salerno in Italy, and that had given them clear indications of the type of beach environment that the Allies would need for their forthcoming invasion. While several parts of northern France seemed like probable landing sites, the Germans recognized that the coast of Upper Normandy would give the Allies good beaches and excellent drop zones. And so they began to reinforce the area between Caen and Cherbourg 
with the expectation that the Allies would most likely begin their invasion there. In May 1944, an entire German division even moved into the area near the village of St. Mary Glees. And the coastal defense units located along what would ultimately become known as Omaha Beach reorganized to better repel an assault from the sea. Son of U.S. President and Spanish-American war hero Teddy Roosevelt, Theodore Roosevelt Jr. was the oldest man to storm the beaches on D-Day. Splashing ashore on Utah Beach, he was also the only general officer to come ashore with the troops of the first wave. At 56 years old, Roosevelt already suffered from a heart condition and arthritis that forced him to walk with a cane. Despite this, he provided critical leadership in the early hours of the invasion. Years later, General Omar Bradley would even state that the bravest action he had ever seen in combat was the sight of Ted Roosevelt on Utah Beach. Although D-Day has often been referred to as the largest amphibious operation in World War II, if not in all history, there's actually one amphibious assault that was even bigger than D-Day in terms of the size of the assault force and the total number of ships involved. Do you know what this operation was? If so, post your answers below or reach out to us through Twitter with hashtag 5ThingsYouDon'tKnow.